Do Sui. Okay. The Battle of Gettysburg was fought during the first three days of July 1863. During the night of July 4, Lee began to retreat southward while storm clouds deluged the country with rain. When Lee reached the Potomac with his defeated army, he found a swollen, impassable river in front of him and a victorious Union army behind him. Lee was in a trap. He couldn't escape. Lincoln saw that. Here was a golden heaven sent opportunity, the opportunity to capture Lee's army and end the war immediately. So, with a surge of high hope, Lincoln ordered Meade not to call a council of war but to attack Lee immediately. Lincoln telegraphed his orders and then sent a special messenger to Meade demanding immediately immediate action. And what did General Meade do? He did the very opposite of what he was told to do. He called a council of war in direct violation of Lincoln's orders. He hesitated. He procrastinated. He telegraphed all manner of excuses. He refused point blank to attack Lee. Finally, the waters receded and Lee escaped over the Potomac with his forces. Lincoln was furious. What does this mean? Lincoln cried to his son Robert. Great God, what does this mean? We had them within our grasp and had only to stretch forth our hands and they were ours. Yet nothing that I could say or do could make the army move. Under the circumstances, almost any general could have defeated Lee. If I had gone up there, I could have whipped my, him myself. In bitter disappointment, Lincoln sat down and wrote me this letter. And remember, at this period of his life, Lincoln was extremely conservative and restrained in his phraseology. So this letter, coming from Lincoln in 1863, was tantamount to the service rebuke. My dear general, I do not believe you appreciate you appreciate the magnitude of this misfortune involved in Lee's escape. He was within our easy grasp, and to have closed upon him would, in connection with our other late successes, have ended the war. As it is, the war will be prolonged indefinitely. If you could not safely attack Lee last Monday, how can you possibly do so south of the river when you can take with you very few, no more than two-thirds of the force you then had in hand? It would be unreasonable to expect, and I do not expect that you can now effect much. Your golden opportunity is gone, and I'm distressed immeasurably because of it. What do you suppose me did when he read the letter? He never saw the letter. Lincoln never mailed it. It was found among his papers after his death. My guess is, and this is only a guess, that after writing that letter, Lincoln looked out of the window and said to himself, just a minute. Maybe I ought not to be so hasty. It is easy enough for me to sit here in the quiet of the White House and order me to attack. But if I had been up, at Gettysburg, and if I had seen as much blood as Meade had seen during the last <clears throat> week, and if my ears had been pierced with the screams and shrieks of the wounded and the dying, maybe I wouldn't be so anxious to attack either. If I had Meade's uh, timid temperament, perhaps I would have done just what he had done. Anyhow, it is water under the bridge now. If I send this letter, it will relieve my feelings, but it will make me try to justify himself. It will make him condemn me. It will arouse hard feelings, impair all this, all his further usefulness as a commander, and perhaps force him to resign from the army. So, as I have already said, Lincoln put the letter aside, for he had learned uh, by bitter experience that sharp criticism and rebukes almost invariably 
and in futility. Theodore Roosevelt said that when he, as president, was confronted with a perplexing problem, he used to lean back and look up at a large painting of Lincoln, which hung above his desk in the White House and ask himself, what would Lincoln do if he were in my shoes? How would he solve this problem? The next time we are tempted to admonish somebody, let's pull a $5 bill out of our pocket. Look at Lincoln's picture on the bill and ask, how would Lincoln handle this problem if he had it? Mark Twain lost his temper occasionally and wrote letters that turned the paper brown. For example, he once wrote to a man who had aroused his ire, the thing for you is to burial permit. You have only to speak and I will see that you get it. On another occasion, he wrote to an editor about a proofreader's attempts to improve my spelling and punctuation. He ordered, Set the matter according to my copy hereafter and see that the proofreader retains his suggestions in the mush of his decayed brain. The writing of these stinging letters made Mark Twain feel better. They allowed him to blow off steam and the letters didn't do any real harm because... Mark's wife secretly lifted them out of the mail. <laughs> they were never sent. Do you know someone you would like to change and regulate and improve? Good, that is fine. I am all in favor of it, but why not begin on yourself? From a purely selfish standpoint, that is a lot more profitable than trying to improve others. Yes, and a lot less dangerous. Don't complain about the snow on your neighbor's roof, said Confucius, when your own doorstep is unclean.